Hey, how you doing? I'm Corey Hunter and welcome to another episode. Here we're going to dive into the famous, popular, infamous question, do gear matters? Uh, in this clip, we watch my man, Jake, the buff nerd. Um, I've been following his journey from pretty much the beginning, right? I didn't know it was the beginning at the time, but listening to the podcast, which I just now became aware of, I'm realizing, yeah, I was watching him back since like 2013. But his rise to fame was his music videos, right? He did a bunch of music videos for Cal and Futuristic. And, um, you know, I was, I was outside the mix. I wasn't really aware of that. I became aware of Buff Nerds because of filmmaking, right? And, you know, he would go up there, do his vlogs, and talk about filmmaking and the other things he got going on. And that's how I became aware of him. And through that, I became aware that he did music videos. And I was like, okay. But I wasn't aware of how much of his success was centered around music videos. That's neither here or there. But here, he's speaking about gear, uh, how important gear is. Um, this is a podcast that uh, Jake and Tom have going on. So if you don't know about the Buff Nerds, go over there. Like, subscribe, check them out. They also have their podcast, Quick Takes with uh, Tom and Jake. It's dope. I haven't listened to an entire podcast of any podcast in a long time. So when I found this podcast like a day ago, I was really listening to the entire thing. But, you know, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a geek, and I was uh, acquainted with them already. So watching their experience was dope for me. But without further ado, let's get into the clip and then dive into the philosophy, the wisdom, and the knowledge they have to share with us. Yeah, we have a red, but I've had that same red for no, four or five years and never was like, yo, I'm going to, I need the new one. I <laughs> we need were to literally upgrade. on set like, shooting a commercial that you were in and the AC of all crew positions to like kind yeah, of boast that this they is a bought good story. the red Raptor. We're wrapping out our reds. He's like, oh yes, you know, I, did you guys hear about the red Raptor? Mind you, like it just been announced maybe like the day yeah. prior we saw the, the specs and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, I look cool. You know, whatever. He's like, yeah, I bought one. We're like, what? I mean, like. The focus, this is this the, is focus, the AC yeah. of the video. He's like, like, yeah, I have a Gemini, I have a Komodo, and I just bought the Red Raptor. And I was like, whoa. I mean, it's like that in that sentence alone, that's like $65,000 worth yeah. of cameras. Like, but like, I mean, I get it. Maybe you're a, po like, that's why it's so circumstantial. And that's why I think this is a cool convo because like I said, how filmmaking is not linear. Anything I say right now applies to some people and doesn't apply to others. Right, Cause you might right. be a production company. Like we worked with like, right. WPSN and they have like 10 reds, but it makes sense. Cause they shoot shows and stuff. So right. having that gear makes sense. So like nothing I say here is gospel, but I think from my perspective, right. I've had people reach out like, Hey, like I've been following your journey. It's awesome. And they like think if they buy a red, they, they can do something very similar. Like, and I feel kind of bad because some people are like, Hey, should I take out a loan and buy this camera? And it's like, if you're in a situation where you have to like financially take out a loan, like that's, that's crazy. Like yeah. I would never want anyone listening or watching thinking they need to like put themselves and a financial burden to like change i people, mean people crazy. do it all the time yeah but every everything i've bought and i always this is kind of like a motto i live by is everything that i buy outside of a house i buy with cash like or not with cash but with cash like i need to have the funds to buy it so like when i bought my helium setup which was like the brain the thing everything i think the total receipt came out to like forty three thousand, whatever like i had forty three thousand dollars to buy that camera. I didn't but take I'll be out a loan. Devil's or... advocate, like someone listening might be like, oh, well, I mean, who has that money laying around? And mind you, you ha you were already kind of pretty well off with some of your business ventures. Right. So I can see where someone's listening or watching me like, well, I'm not in that situation and I want that camera. Like, but I right. think to your point, I would say, I mean, you, I guess could finance it, but it's just like, God, that is so risky to like, that's the price of a car and like a car that Devalue. camera day after day is not going to really be bringing you much sure rentals here and there, but like, 
I mean, dude, yeah, every day it's like, it's case in point, especially with Reds, their ecosystem, they like will cannibalize it to the point. They're better now. I remember, bro, right when I bought my Epic, I think I bought it for like 25K. Three months prior, it was 50K. They slashed it in half. And like everyone on the forums, like, what the hell? Like you completely just deflated like the value of something so rapidly. Like, yeah. that. you know what I mean? Like that's what's insane about these things. Yeah. When you're buying tech, you're buying something that it's not going to hold its value. It's devaluing. Uh, you know just day after day they're so, constantly boom. while you're using that working um, on the next model they put we don't want to take too much if you want to see the entire clip go over the quick takes with uh tom and jake also swing over by birth buff nerds they got a lot of dope stuff jake got a lot of dope stuff jake is a dope dude all right um i think they said it man i don't know if there's anything left for me to say right um he mentioned on set there was a guy and he spent about like 65,000 on gear, right? Because you know, red cams are expensive. Like, like, like inexpensive reds is like $10,000. Like, it's like he said, it's a value, like a car. And like a car, it get devalued the moment it leaves the store, right? The moment you drive a car off the parking lot, it's over it's like it's, it's losing value right and it's the same thing with cameras and it happens pretty quickly right you can spend seven thousand dollars on a camera and then uh, once you use it once you're done with it a few years later you can't get three hundred dollars for the darn thing like it's, it's it's crazy like that right uh even if you sell it with like a bunch of like memory cards and batteries on craigslist it, it becomes a, it's, it's a tough sell right it's, it's tough to pull off um but i heard and i continue to hear and i think moving forward there will always be a conversation about gear and quality how gear and quality go hand in hand right we want the new toys so that our stuff could look as dope and crisp as the stuff we see right we like look man if you want to play like the big boys we need big boy tools and we invest our money into that right um one of the things that tom mentions is that um he wouldn't advise somebody taking a loan to purchase a camera but i can see from the filmmaker's point of view from that guy's point of view that he's investing in his business and hopefully that camera will bring more clients and so on I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen. It don't matter how dope or expensive your camera is. If somebody don't want to pay you, they're not going to play, pay you. That's just what it is. People become semi-aware of cameras. But, um, like, bullshit artists is real. Like, you have somebody and they start talking about, you know, what equipment you got? What tech you got? And you're telling them, and they're like, nah, that's not up to par, you know, and they trying to negotiate prices, they just busting your balls, all right? Because when it comes down to it, it comes down to the man and the skill. And when they start talking to you about equipment and such and trying to charge you more due to the equipment rather than... Because, yes, you do have to pay for equipment and it is valuable, right? Like, if you do have a rat, you do have to pay for that. But it's not more important than the man. Somebody wise would say, look, I'd rather have this guy with his stuff than some random dude with a red can. Because the rent cam is nothing by itself. The gear is nothing by itself. It's all about the narrative. It's all about the visuals. It's all about the complete project, right? So, we can't lean on gear to give us that dope quality. Because it's not going to give us dope quality. Like, it might give us something a little better than if we had something else. But the only thing that can really give us dope quality is the person holding the camera. Uh, if you're the filmmaker, if you're the camera operator, then that person would be you. You the one that have to make stuff dope. You have to give people direction. You have to have the ability to light or communicate your vision to the other hands on set that's there to help you, right? Like, we have to create an atmosphere in the visual so that we can capture it and it becomes dope. And then we got to edit it. It's a whole process and the gear is overrated. In my opinion, it's just overrated. Um, I don't get it. I don't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend. I wouldn't spend ten thousand dollars on a camera. I just wouldn't do it. Like if somebody gave me ten thousand dollars and it's like, yo, you need to shoot a short. I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there that I'd be like, yo, I'm gonna get this camera. They spend ten G's for this camera. 
and then they have nothing left for the short and then wonder why it comes out like crap, right? First off, you don't even know how to operate the camera. You don't even know what to do with the camera. And on top of that, what about your script? What about the narrative? What about the characters? What about the people? What about the places and the location? These are the things that I would worry about. So if somebody was to give me $10,000, I would say, all right. And I'm talking about I have nothing. I got to start from scratch, right? I would get a camera for under $1,000, right? I would spend another 500 on like just lights and stuff, right? So I probably spend like $2,000 between the camera, lights, and whatever I need, right? Just leave me with like $8,000, right? Probably use the the I probably use like four thousand for for the sets for the for for the cast crew. I, I'll try to knock it out right. Four G's trying to knock stuff out in a day because it's a short, which is probably twelve minutes. I'll probably try to drop four thousand and see what I can do because I know I take on a lot of roles. A lot of roles I wouldn't have to pay for. I wouldn't have to pay for a director and, you know, a producer and so on and so forth because I would assume those responsibilities and I'll be able to stretch that money, right? The more responsibility you take on, the more money you can stretch, but you take on more responsibility. more things that goes wrong, the more people in the area, right? If you know how to lead them. But uh, like I said, I spend $2,000 on camera lights, probably spend 4000 on... The actual production probably used the other four thousand for marketing, and boom, there go your ten thousand, right? Because nobody talks about marketing, right? But you gotta, you gotta move your stuff. People want to believe. Look, if you build it, they come. But it costs money to get your work out there. That's just what it is. We can't just hope that uh, pressing record on the right cam is gonna get us to the promised land because uh, it's not, right? We gotta do a little bit more than that. Uh, and yeah, before I just keep on rambling, because, you know, I could keep going forever. The gear doesn't make the man. The man makes the gear, right? Uh, I like talking about, you know, my superheroes and Marvel and whatever. Iron Man is dope because of Tony, not because the armor, right? Tony makes the armor. The armor doesn't make the man. It's the same thing with the gear, right? Give it. You get a dope filmmaker. You give him a phone and say, "Look, you gotta make a movie on that." They'll be like, "Okay." It's not like filmmakers are saying, "I'm only dope with this camera." Like they're not moving like that. They're saying, "Look, these cameras shooting on film or digital. It communicates certain feelings and emotions, and you know they become a purist like that." But they're don't get it confused. They're not dependent upon. This $50,000 camera, right? They could get it done with their iPhone. And so can you, all right? So, yeah, there we go. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming out here and joining me. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, until next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check me out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Leave a comment so that we can get a discussion going. Check out the Patreon. Check out the Turtle School that's there for you. Tools to help you learn and write and create stories. Thank you and I appreciate you.